the bullets that we're dodging Hide the bones in the garden Never beg for a pardon Cash in before the house rules Never break from the ground rules Got too high off our own fumes We keep playing with fire What's going on everybody? Welcome to the PNWall channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, before this episode, we're gonna be announcing a giveaway. And all you have to do to win this giveaway is comment down below, uh, tell me your favorite part about elk hunting, the hardest elk hunt you've ever experienced, because this is mine, you're gonna see why. Um, but we're gonna be doing a huge giveaway for Phelps Game Calls. And to win these Phelps Game Call packages, which there are 10 of, yes, 10 separate winners. And uh, the biggest prize package is going to be uh, Phelps Renegade Bugle Tube, three reeds, uh, amp frame reeds, three of those, and a mini X, external uh, call. So I'm gonna be picking 10 winners from down in the comment section below. And uh, to get an additional entry, all you have to do is share this video on your social media and make sure that you tag and wild so we can see it and that's it we'll put you the name in another hat and that's all you have to do so there's gonna be 10 winners in this first episode and then a 10 more winners in the next episode and uh, it's that simple comment down below and every comment down there will be an entry and then an additional entry will be sharing on your social media uh, Phelps game calls is awesome stuff it's what I use throughout the season for waterfowl predator big game elk and uh, my favorite is the Dirk Durham Maverick signature call. It's an amazing call and you guys can win one or 10. So please enjoy this film and comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you so please. We'd really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next episode. Well, me and Travis just made it to my unit and we pulled in, found the first little sliver of public and uh, we're gonna sleep in the truck tonight. It is 4.06 in the morning. Is that right? Yep, 4.06 in the morning. Um, we're just going to wake up and figure out where we're at. Try to set, try to find a camp spot tomorrow afternoon sometime. And then, uh, yeah, go from there. So The drive is over. The boring part is out of the way. We didn't get any travel footage, but that's all right. We are now in the unit. We have arrived. Travis, say hello. Hello. <laughs> so, it's time to get after it, but first, sleep. So, check you again in the morning. All right, when you're ready. Well, we just uh, pulled into this little camp spot for a possible camp, and Clint was behind us in his truck, and um, we jumped out, and I was, like, doing the hands-up thing to Clint about, like, hey, what do you think of this camp? It's a nice little spot little wall behind us but the wind is ripping down this valley and Clint's just uh picked up his glass and glassed this timber wall over here and he goes oh shit Jeff there's elk right here so I run back to my truck and grab my optics and he's like there's a bull in there so he got the spotter on him for I don't know maybe 30 seconds there was uh we saw two for at first 
one of the bulls that he said was the bigger one fed down into this draw. Uh, we had a good look. He got a good look on the spotter on the second bull. Um, said he's like, I don't know, we don't put a score on it, but just for the quick second, he's like, you know, 280 ish. Couldn't really count points or anything, but nice frame. So I think we're going to set up camp here, um, get into our hunting gear. I'm still in my damn cowboy boots. Get all of our gear on, um, make a game plan, look at the iPad, kind of see what that draw does, see what's, you know, there's not a ton of hunters. We haven't seen much of anybody yet. There's one trailer over here. We don't know where he's at, though. Truck's not there. Um, but pretty cool that we can glass elk from this camp. Um, it's a nice little spot. Got a nice fire pit. I don't know. We'll see. So we're going to get camp set up, I think, and then make a game plan on these bulls. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. Good? Yeah. Well, just got camp set up. Um, took us a little bit, but this is our, uh, this is our camp. Travis, Travis show him the Idaho, Idaho camp. Mr. Clean Blaylist, everyone. How's it going? He's the new spot of the bulls this morning, so he's uh, very gracefully passed him to me, so he's allowing me to shoot him. Very nice of him. So we're gonna uh, kind of get up the road, kind of make a play on these things, uh, have a good idea of where they wanted to be. Uh, Clint was saying just the way they're acting, their mannerisms are kind of heading to bed. Um, I think it's right around like 11:30 right now. Lots of time in the day left. We're probably gonna play it safe and probably get up above them and try to glass into them, play the wind, get everything right, and then really get a good look at them. I'm, I don't have any standards really. I just want to shoot a nice bull. Um, probably just trust Clint. If he's like, that's a good bull, I'll probably just go down and shoot it if we can. Um, no real standards. The only bull elk I've ever shot was a Washington quality bull, and he's like a 260 archery. Um, I'm just here to have a good time, learn some new country, hang out with good friends, and enjoy this beautiful stuff. You never know when your last season. So just going to take it in, have a good time learn some stuff and uh, learn some stuff. Hopefully we get to fill game bags at the end of it. So let's get it on. All right, we're gonna stock these bulls, get up there. Wind's still in our favor, it's not a very far hike. Um, we're gonna get up there and see what we got. Starting to snow a little bit. The wind's perfect to come at him from this direction. 
The only problem is he's faces downhill, so using a muzzle loader, you gotta get nice and close. Yeah. So we'll see what we can do. That other bull would get up and re-bed so we know where he was. I know. I did, uh, me and Clayton are gonna make a stock on that bull. We gotta cut off 500, 510-ish yards. He's still bedded. Clay watched him and he said he fell asleep. The wind's ripping, so he's gonna be, you know, very limited. Uh, he's not gonna be able to hear very good. The snow's flying. Um, I think we might, we have a good game plan. We're gonna go down to this bottom. We're gonna go past him because the wind's just howling down this way go past him a little bit and then just tiptoe up through that timber and try to get to about 100, 120 yards. Lay down and shoot him in his bed. That's what we're writing up. We gotta go cash that check though. So wish me and Clint luck.
Reload, bud. Here's your ramrod. You got eyes on him, Zach. Travis, sorry. Who is this in the back? I saw him go straight up. I watched him hit. I, I saw him fucking crunch up, but he just went straight up. And then it looks like he went over. Did you see blood at all through the uh, camera or through the spotter? I didn't see any blood. It looked like he kind of hit like right behind the shoulder and hunched up and then struggled to get up a little bit and then just ran over the hill. He kind of got behind the trees and. 10 for it sounded good. I think you got him, buddy. What a cool! Oh man, that was a hell of a stock. That was epic. I hopefully I was on him. I was like trying to talk to you. He's a seven on his left side. He's got a little little tide coming up off his uh. Dude, that's a awesome. Good that's a good bull. I can't believe he let us crawl all the way to here. He, was he? Did he see us? For oh sure? yeah, he saw. He was watching y'all's back there. He couldn't see me because the the. Oh, we to pack up head that way or just hang out. Just keep eyes on him until we. Yeah, just keep glassing there and then that next draw and make sure you don't see him come up on that next side hill. Just keep scanning and see if see if you see him. Holy fuck, Clint! Day one. <laughs> <laughs> you got a primer? I don't know what I did with that handful. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wait here a little bit and then peek over that ridge. Holy shit, Clint. <laughs> That's a dandy bull, dude. That's a cool bull, man. What was the range once you uh, got up there? Uh, 81. Oh. We stalked into 81. 81 Clint. yards. <laughs> Congrats, man. Thanks, man. I really hope I hammered him. I hope you hammered him. I had to freehand that top because it was too tall in the sage. Yeah, I figured. But I got a good rear rest and I just had to, I put my lock to my elbow. Felt pretty good. Yeah, dude. I just it like, sounded good right there after that last rib, like you said. And I just aimed for that white and I just boom. You hit a tree or the dirt, yeah. It sound like that, too. So it sounded like you hit a watermelon. <laughs> Me and Clint just stalked, made an epic stalk, dealed with a little bit of wind swirling, but Clint nailed his bed. We went up this timber line, and I was ahead of Clint because, of course, I have the rifle and we're getting into the hot zone. Then I look around, I just see boy. He was right on top of us. I remember looking at Clint and I was like, he's less than 100 right here. And so we sage belly crawled army, I don't know, probably 15 more, oh, 20 more. Yeah. And I just was trying to get over that sage brush. I really wanted him to stand, but I look back at Clint and I was like, would you take that tour? He's like, oh yeah, take that last rib. And that's kind of where I held and just touched it off, man. And it walloped him good. He, uh, we had an eye in the sky. Travis uh, watched him just go straight up in the timber and disappear. Hasn't came out in any of the sagebrush. Clint says it sounded good. It sounded good. I couldn't see shit because the smoke, of course, must look. Um, but I did see in the shot that he's trying to get up and he can't really get up that fast. We know he's hurt. We know he's hurt. Let's go find him. Well, uh, Travis just joined us. Travis is with us. We're having a little break here. It's about three o'clock. It's about 50 minutes since I shot. Uh, Clint picked up some blood, not the greatest, probably 15 yards from where I hit him. Um, so we backed out, waited for Travis, and now we're gonna wait until um, um, 3:10. Give him a full hour, and then we're gonna start tracking him. So we'll keep it up to date. So update on that bull that I stalked yesterday. Um, we tracked blood until dark. And when I mean track blood, it was like, we tracked tracks and every 200 yards we'd find a pin drop on a, on a leaf. Um, I don't know where I hit that bull. It was not a good hit. It was not a fatal hit. We tracked it like over three miles with pin drops of blood. So we're very, very confident that bull is still very much alive. 
um, we're gonna go back and glass that same canyon and uh, see see if he's still back in there see what he's doing um, cover lots of country today looking for him looking for you know birds in case we miss something that shit happens um, sometimes you can come in uh, cornering away like that and you know it'll it won't exit especially because it's a muzzle loader it won't exit it'll blend their guts up and he's dead and you don't have very much blood to go off of but we got to a point where it was in deadfall lost his track and then it went up into um, the sagebrush and wide open after that so we went up we got up there and started glassing and unfortunately never turned up that bowl so don't know where I hit him that's hunting super shitty but not much else we can do man we had Clint and, and Travis we were on hands and knees um, looking for blood it was pouring down snow and rain sometimes so that's why we didn't have the camera out getting everything soaking wet so <sighs> is what it is back at it today Thanks for watching everybody. We appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment or hit the like button. And also, on your way out of here, if you hit the subscribe button, that'd mean a lot. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified upon every upload. Thanks so much. We'll catch you in the next video.